Finally, my shirt is appropriate for the video that we're watching. Yay! Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kway, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at Honest Trailers, The Dark Knight Rises, featuring Red Letter Media. Ooh. This is from Screen Junkies. Thank you, Screen Junkies, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. I'm laughing because I'm trying so hard not to fumble my words every time I say that uh, little uh, thing there. So, just a fun little fact. I did an experimental video some ages ago called 25 Word Challenge, mm -hmm. and one of them was to The Dark Knight Rises. And it was one of my favorite things that I've ever done that most of you have never seen. So I'm gonna play it for you right now. 25 World Challenge! The Dark Knight Rises. Batman trusts Catwoman. Consequently, he gets his back broken, loses Gotham, and must outswim nuclear fallout post knife wound. Now he loves Catwoman. Anyway. Here we go. Honest trailers, The Dark Knight Rises. Here we go. Red Letter Media, aren't those the guys that you really like? Red Letter Media, yeah, they do a lot of, um, Yeah. they do very epic, epic breakdowns and reviews. Very so, fun. Or at least that's what they used to do, now they just do long reviews. Hold on, Dark Knight has to be next. Sorry, I meant Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> oh, what's that From director Christopher Nolan comes the obligatory finale to his Dark Knight trilogy that clearly peaked with the Joker. The Dark Knight Rises, the epic final chapter that'll mildly entertain you when you're watching it, but will ultimately anger and disappoint you when you really start to think about it. Revisit the iconic Bruce Wayne, a man who turned the pain of his parents' death into a superhero, but for some reason mopes around for eight years after his sort of girlfriend dies. I apologize to the voiceover artist here. I just love John Bailey so much. <laughs> Oh my God! I, I just yes. I, I wish John Bailey would go back and record these. That's not Red Letter Media. That's just the host that was on Honest Trailers for a long time. No offense to him, please. I like his voice. Please just don't fine. take offense. I just because he might be watching this video. I just really really like what John Bailey does. I do too. Mm, so there is room for both. Suit up as he spends the first forty five minutes hobbling around on canes, getting knocked over easily, growing a gross depression beard, and be told. <laughs> that his body is in complete shambles. Even though in the entire trilogy, he's only clocked in maybe a year and a half as the Batman. Oh. But chaos will arrive in the form of Bane, a Bane. villain who no one can fully understand. <laughs> this is cost to your strength. Where is the truth about despair? But I never escape. How about your schedule, Captain? Prompting Moatman to unretire and plop on a magic knee brace that'll instantly cure him so he can take Bane head on for a few minutes <laughs> until he's crippled again for the of the movie, leaving this mumbling warlord to fulfill his overly complicated plot of terrorizing Gotham for three pointless months, which prompts only one riot and zero gridlock. Seriously. Where is everybody? <laughs> Get ready for a nearly three hour Batman movie where Batman only shows up for about 33 minutes. Oh, and really? when he does show up, he's so terrible he reveals his secret identity to complete strangers. Never conducts background checks on his maids or his board members. He uses ineffective gadgets stands atop random buildings that are way too dangerous to balance on <laughs> and wastes several hours painting a bridge in gasoline. I, I did wonder about that. A story so large in scale, it was partly shot in IMAX, which becomes super distracting when it's constantly changing aspect ratios. It was. And a film. I'll give him that. Yeah, I mean, it was distracting in the theater when it was jumping back and forth. There was also this one sequence when they were showing Bane's backstory and you saw Tom Hardy for just a moment. It was a single of him, uh -huh. not a close-up, just a single, right? But he wasn't saying anything. And the reason why Christopher Nolan goes back and forth is, well, number one, IMAX was like more complicated, more expensive to use. But the bigger reason why you don't see the entire film in IMAX usually is because IMAX cameras, with the way Christopher Nolan does it, he does it on film, and the film IMAX cameras are, are quite loud. Yeah. And so the reason why he cuts back and forth 
forth is because he shoots the dialogue stuff, 35 millimeter, action stuff or non-dialogue stuff in IMAX. Mm -hmm. This shot of Tom Hardy, he wasn't saying anything. He just looked up and that was in 35 millimeter and it cut between that and IMAX. Like it cut between IMAX and 35 millimeter uh, quite a bit and it's like, it, just Felt shoot the whole jarring. thing in IMAX, dude. Yeah, yeah. Just shoot like, at least shoot a consistent sequence in IMAX. The reason I'm harping on this moment right here is because that did bother me. I respect Nolan's desire to shoot on film. But God damn, is it annoying when you're jumping between formats, at least for me, because I'm very like, I notice things like a- Yeah, like a little meerkat. You know, like in, in Up, when everyone was like, squirrel! Squirrel! That's me, when I'm looking at stuff, you know? And so, yeah, I get that feeling. So poorly paced, it moves slow for two hours, then randomly zooms through three months of time <laughs> without telling the audience forcing this completely rushed ending that'll leave you asking questions like why are the criminals constantly hitting batman with their guns instead of shooting him why would the cia let masked men onto their plane without checking who they were first how did bane know about the existence and the exact location of batman's secret armory especially after lucius said it was off the books <laughs> and why has no one stumbled upon his huge ass airplane how did Bane and his henchmen hide motorcycles inside the stock exchange? How is it possible that <laughs> Bruce Wayne completely healed his broken back in less than three months? Didn't he need a doctor? How did Batman get from the hole in the middle of nowhere into the quarantine Gotham without any money or equipment? Why would they send the entire Gotham City police force into the sewers all at the exact same time? Yeah, if Camelor knew he was Batman, why did she let him wander off with Lucius? Why didn't she just kill him when she had the chance? In fact, why didn't she just detonate the bomb right then? Okay, well, <laughs> there's like mystery movies where that kind of stuff, like there's oftentimes you have the killer right yeah, next yeah. to everybody else and they don't actually make the move yet till the lights are out. I don't know. There's always things like that in movies, aren't there? Mm -hmm, they yeah. reveal themselves later. It's like, it's been you all along. Exactly. Like know. just They're just waiting for that big reveal. Just go know? with it. The audience doesn't know yet, so it's fine. Also, how many beers did they drink? They didn't actually drink them. Oh, okay. And why does Batman talk to Catwoman in his Batman voice when she knows he's Bruce Wayne? How come everybody in Gotham could figure out that Bruce Wayne was Batman except for Commissioner Gordon? <laughs> Even the character with Down Syndrome, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, didn't know. What? Why didn't what? Bruce Wayne show up in a French cafe after being pronounced dead? I think that would have attracted the attention of the media. That's true. How did Bruce Batman Wayne, he's a billionaire. swim nine miles to survive if he only had five seconds left on the bomb? Didn't anyone in Gotham think it was weird that Batman and Bruce Wayne both died on the exact same day? Bruce Wayne was Batman? <laughs> Starry, the cast of Inception, Princess Diaries, Princess. Kristen Stewart's Mouth, what? Molly Cocaine, Bruce Willis, and Bane Bruce. The Dark Knight Rises. Ugh, I'm pretty worried about Man of Steel now. <laughs> oh. Thanks to Red Letter Media. Oh. I mean, there's definitely some truth in there. I think that over time, uh, Screen Junkies has definitely taken on his trailers and made it more of a video that is having fun. Yeah. As opposed to just sort of relentlessly attacking on a movie. Because that, that's what this feels like to me, is it feels like it's just like straight up attacking the film. I actually enjoyed the movie when I watched it. I when, thought it was fun. Well, right now I'm just strictly talking about the commentary right. on the film. And I'm saying it feels like an attack versus we're having fun talking about this. Uh, yeah. Rib, rib. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and so whatever the case is, like they're, they're definitely making some good points like yeah but it's entertaining and like it's a, that's the thing with with nolan films that i think people forget because it's done with such class you forget it's popcorn yeah that's the thing it's like nolan films are still popcorn movies at the end of the day it, like all of them all of them like, it's like a mcdonald's disguised as a louis vuitton yeah. or something like that you're like oh this feels fancy this feels high class and you're like wait hold on yeah huh. no and that's okay there's nothing wrong i mean that's it's it's like i would say it's more like a you know the counter it's like a gourmet bur it's still a burger at the end of the day no matter what it's still a burger but it's sure. a gourmet burger you know what i mean yeah it's elevated it's, it's an nice. elevated burger yeah but people you know sometimes people forget they're, they think they're eating steak it's like no no you're eating a burger still <laughs> don't get it twisted <laughs> it's a burger 
There's your french fries. Yeah. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of holes you can poke in the movie for sure. Sure. And it, it doesn't come anywhere near the, I guess, the power of the Dark Knight. That movie was just so awesome. There's no way it could have come close, but I thought Tom Hardy was an awesome villain. I agree. I liked him a lot. Uh, I couldn't understand a lot of what he was saying. It, it got, for me, it got anxiety inducing because I want to know what he's saying. Right. You know? I want to know. But he was so, you know, just his presence was just so, like, looming and menacing and, and his look and everything. I really enjoyed it. And then I enjoyed his goofy voice as well. I was a little bit disappointed by the moves. I'm not going to lie. Really? Yeah, just a little bit. I know that the objective was him to just have sheer mass. Bulk, yeah. Just sheer size, and I get that. But I was slightly disappointed that it, just, it looked like moves. <laughs> ah, you know? I mean, he just looks like a strong guy. When you look at those, like, strong guys, sure. they kind of look like that, but bigger, you know? I know. I agree. But it's a comic book movie. Why are we trying to be realistic? I just don't see the point. Because he's a real life person as well. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Fire your trainer, Tom Hardy. <laughs> no, I mean, he just, he bulked up, he like seriously bulked up. Yeah. The film, so, and I'm, we all know Tom Hardy can get ripped. I mean, he's done films where he's looked crazy ripped. Yeah, he's done so, several. Strong questions, but I bought the trilogy because I was entertained. I found that there were enough entertaining elements in the film that it's like, it's still worthwhile. I'd still throw that on and just have it on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch it, you know? Sure. The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do let us know your feelings, honest feelings in the comments mm. below. Subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. I'm Jabby Koi. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.